Hey van lifers, digital nomads, and travelers alike. Today, I'm going to review how to wire a Renogy 40 amp DC to DC charger. So, let's go ahead and skip the long intros and life stories and get right into it. Here's a simplified wiring diagram for a DC to DC charger. Basically, you connect your van batteries to the charger and your charger to your house batteries. Easy peasy, right? Now, let's start with connecting the wires to your van's battery. At this point, make sure your van is off and any other power sources that could potentially bring juice to the wires is off. On the battery, you'll see there is a positive side and a negative side. Let's start with the positive side. You'll notice there are a lot of terminals available, but we want to choose one that doesn't already have fuses or other wires running to it. As you can see, we chose the top terminal for our positive wire. The flow of electricity will be out of the van batteries and into the DC to DC charger. The first step is to install 50 amp fuse directly into the positive battery terminal. I use the nut and washer to secure one side of the fuse to the positive terminal of the battery. The other side of the fuse connects to your positive wire. Again, using a nut and washer, secure the lug to the 50 amp inline fuse. And just a quick note on wire size. I use 6 gauge wire because that's what's recommended by Renogy based on the distance between my van's batteries and my DC to DC charger. For lugs, I use 6 by quarter copper lugs with shrink wrap for wire protection. When everything is done correctly, it should look something like this. Now, moving over to the negative side. Again, choose an open terminal with no other wires running to it. Next, using a nut and washer, connect the lug of your negative cable to the open negative terminal on the van battery. And again, just sort of reiterating that I use 6 gauge wire because that's what Renogy recommends in their manual, based on the distance from the van's battery to the DC to DC charger. Now that both wires are connected, you should have something that looks like this. The next step is snaking the wires from the van's battery to wherever your DC to DC charger is mounted in your van. We have ours directly behind the driver's seat, so we snake the wires under the floor mats and beneath the seats to our charger. Once you get your wires from the van's battery to the DC to DC charger, it's time to hook them up. We'll start with the positive wire again, which needs to run through a 60 amp circuit breaker first. I use the 60 amp circuit breaker because that's what Renogy recommended in their manual. You'll see on most breakers there's a label on each side. One says BAT, that's the side you hook your wire into first because it's coming from the source of power, which is often the batteries. The other side says AUX, and will be where the power comes out of to go to the next component. Similar to how you connected your positive wire to the inline 50 amp fuse on the van battery, you'll use a lug, washer, and nut to connect the positive wire to the BAT side of your circuit breaker. Next. We want to connect a positive wire from the aux side of the circuit breaker to the input of the DC to DC charger. So, go ahead and cut a length of wire that will reach between your circuit breaker and the DC to DC charger. Connect one end to the aux side of the circuit breaker, as shown. Then, connect the other end of the wire to the input side of the DC to DC charger. It will say input on the side of the charger, so you'll know you're in the right place. Now, onto the negative wire. Once you've snaked it through to the DC to DC charger, connect it directly to the input side of the charger. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Next, it's time to connect our DC to DC charger to our house batteries to complete the circuit. We'll start with a positive wire. Cut a small length of wire that will fit between the DC to DC charger and the next circuit breaker. I use the 50 amp circuit breaker because, well, you guessed it. That's what Renogy recommends. It's also important to note that the wire size changes between the DC to DC charger and the house batteries. It worked out that we use 6 gauge for everything because of the distance of our appliances, but you may need a smaller or larger wire. When you have your wire sizes figured out, connect the positive wire to the output side of the DC to DC charger. Again, it will say output on the side of the charger so you know you're in the right place. Next, connect the other end of the wire to the bat side of the circuit breaker. From here, 
will connect a positive wire to the aux side of the circuit breaker. This wire will lead to your bus bars or house batteries depending on your setup, so make sure to cut the wire length long enough. Connect the other side of that wire to the positive bus bars of your electrical system. Circling back to the negative wire, we can connect it directly from the DC to DC charger to the bus bars. Start by cutting a length of wire that will reach from the charger to your house batteries or bus bars. Then simply connect to the output side of the DC to DC charger. Connect the other side of that wire to the negative bus bars or house battery, depending on your setup. After all that, your DC to DC charger should look something like this now. But don't get too excited yet. We still have two more steps to complete. Next is the D plus ignition cable. This was a mystery to me when I read it in the manual. It seemed like they just expected you to know what this thing was, but rest assured, it's easier than you think. The D plus ignition cable is a small wire that connects from the DC to DC charger to the ignition circuit of your van. The purpose of this cable is to alert your DC to DC charger that the van is on thus giving it permission to start sucking juice from your vehicle's batteries. This prevents the charger from draining your van batteries while the vehicle is off. To install the D-plus ignition cable, cut a length of 16 or 18 gauge wire, again, recommended by Renogy, that will reach from your DC to DC charger to the ignition circuit of your vehicle. Use a small flathead screwdriver to loosen the clamps in the D-plus slot on the side of the charger. Then, strip one end of the wire and insert it into the slot. Use your flathead again to tighten the clamps onto the wire. It's never a bad idea to give the wire a little tug just to make sure that it's in there securely. An optional step here is to add an on-off switch, which is what we did. This way, you can choose when you want your DC to DC charger to run, as opposed to it running every time you turn the van on. Next, you'll need to snake the wires again so that they reach the dash in an inconspicuous way. Depending on your vehicle, you'll need to find the ignition circuit or another wire that only becomes hot when the vehicle is turned on, such as the cigarette lighter or USB ports. I connected mine to the cigarette lighter. The last step is to adjust the dip switches located just above the D-plus ignition cable. The switches will be unique to your specific electrical setup. As you can see, ours are set to S1 off, S2, 3, and 4 are on, and S5 is off. To give you an idea of our electrical setup, we have a Ram ProMaster 2500 with a 180 amp alternator. We connect it to house batteries, which we have two 200 amp lithium batteries. Once you have your dip switches figured out, it's time to test this baby out. Start up your vehicle and, if necessary, flip your switch on. If a green light appears, that means it's powered but it doesn't necessarily mean it's working. To know if your DC to DC charger is truly working, I recommend getting a battery monitor. This will show you your positive amps so you can tell when you turn on the DC to DC charger that you're pulling in additional amps. That's all for now. If you found this video helpful, hit the subscribe button and follow us on social media at Dirtbags with Furbags.